Hello everybody and welcome to this rather special Car Design Dialogues Fireside Chat. My name's Michael Nash, I'm the Deputy Editor of Car Design News. But before we get started, I would like to remind you that we are taking questions. So if you have any, don't be shy. Uh, please go ahead and fire them away and we'll uh, do our best to get you some answers. So we've had some brilliant discussions and in-depth car design reviews so far, but I've been particularly looking forward to this session. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce naval designer, author, and former car design extraordinaire, Patrick Lecumont. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrick. Thank you so much to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so before we get into your past, Patrick, I'd like to talk a little bit about the here and now, if that's okay. So you currently work as a design consultant and hold the position as president of the advisory board at the Sustainable Design School in Nice. Can you tell us a little bit about both these roles? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, when when I um, retired and I will not mention that word again, okay? So you've heard it. Uh, in fact, I clearly did not want to be um, just a, a designer, uh, automobile designer sitting on a side seat uh, in, in a company. And um, what I really wished to do was to start afresh. And therefore, uh, I chose to go into a field where I knew strictly nothing and to become once again a, tra <clears throat> a trainee. And um, luck would have it that um, I was contacted by, uh, by a company who asked me whether I would be uh, interested to design uh, a boat, uh, their uh, uh, admiral ship. Uh, and I got into the boat business, not having had any particular passion with, with boats, uh, apart from the fact that all designers like things that move, be they planes, trains, cars, of course, and, and boats. But um, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a sailman or, or whatever. So uh, I got into this field and I really began to like it. I worked with one of the most um, uh, well-known uh, naval architects called VPLP Design. And um, I've been their exterior designer for most part uh, since, well, the last 10 years. And I've designed an awful lot of boats, uh, you know, in the meantime. And um, it, it's, it's been great just to not to be a trophy designer, as uh, it might have happened, but instead of that, of starting a brand new thing and uh, being curious once again and asking questions and and making mistakes and so on. So I've, I've really thoroughly enjoyed that. In um, uh, 2013, um, together with a couple of other uh, people, we opened this uh, school uh, in Nice, uh, in the south, on the French Riviera, in the south of France, um, called the Sustainable Design School. It's an international school uh, taught in the English language, and we have students come from coming from all over the place all over the world, be they from, from China, India, and so on and so forth, and South America and Europe. Um, and uh, in the last few years in the automobile industry, I, be, I began to start getting a little concerned about what I had been doing for the whole of my life. Uh, someone calculated that I was uh, uh, responsible for 60 million vehicles in, in my uh, career. And, um, you know, if you make the calculation, that's an awfully big traffic jam that you create about 3,400 times around the, the, the earth. Um, and, and I felt very concerned about uh, our planet and where we were going. And um, I wanted to um, use my competence, what I had, uh, to help young people um, work on a better future. Uh, and this is how we got into the creation of this uh, school, which is now part of the University of Nice. 
It's uh, amazing, and I think both of those things, Patrick, uh, you know, starting afresh with boat design and going into, um, you know, thinking about the planet and, and sustainable design, they're so commendable. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. I think sustainable design, sustainability is something that's really close to my heart. And uh, so I just wondered if perhaps you could talk a, a little bit more about the things that the school are doing, maybe some of the courses, maybe some of the key points uh, that the students are trying to address. Well, the, 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 uh, we have had now uh, five or six years or seven years, in fact, of um, uh, students uh, graduating. And one of the things that we're particularly uh, proud of is that our students, uh, I think there's something like 95% uh, actually get jobs in companies and uh, some of them have um, uh, got into the design business in in a company uh, in a reasonably high level we also have quite a few students who actually come through um, uh, you know being 30 or 40 years old who have graduated in another field be it engineering or architecture or sociology basically what we teach in the school is an approach is a, a response what can we do to have an impact on on our planet uh, little by little in whatever the field that you're in we work extremely closely with with companies and we in fact work on projects uh, with them very different type of projects you know we've worked on auto, with automotive companies be it um, bmw and, and renault uh, we've worked um, with cities, uh, we've worked with uh, hospitals, uh, and each time we, uh, we set a, a team of uh, young uh, students and sometimes, you know, senior students to um, senior in the sense of, you know, they might be 40 years old, uh, and they, they work upon a, um, a, a problematic that has been set by the, the company, even though many times we spend actually redefining with them what the problem uh, you know really is and this is a, a, a most important part so we teach um, all that is related to human design um, i've always been myself extremely involved in the in the notion of design being related to human beings and i've been involved in things like we might talk about it uh, touch design and simplexity, uh, anything which is uh, human uh, related. We, we of course, uh, uh, teach uh, echo design, but it's really more the, the approach. So, so we have, we're in a school where we have all, almost more, I believe, more professors or teachers than students. And we do not have a permanent staff, but we have visiting lecturers on a continuous basis because of my own experience in in teaching where i have found that too often when um, somebody becomes a teacher on a staff um, they might lose the contact with the industry or with whatever the, you know, the real world is so we do like these people who have you know come from outside go into the school they will take a project or they will do a series of lectures so yes uh, it's uh, um, designed with the humans being you know central in the central position um, i guess my my interest is i have always liked to work with people and i love working with students you know it's just uh, i feel that i've been blessed by uh, a most interesting uh, life and I, I call myself a you know a lucky man, which is maybe just a funny story. I tell you that one day uh, I was in London to I was going to receive a, a design award, design of the year of a magazine, and the guy um, said, "And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to give a, a warm welcome to Mr. Patrick Lucky Man." And it was uh, the mispronunciation of my name. I loved it, and I said, "Well, I've changed my name, so from now on." You can call me Mr. Lucky Man or Patrick Lucky Man. But anyway, wow. yes, I've been very lucky, and uh, I like to, I like to transmit, you know, and and transfer all those things that I've learned to uh, the younger generation. 
Yeah, I, I hope I got your name a little bit more on point earlier. <laughs> Don't worry. I've had many, many variants. I think yours was a pretty good try. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> uh, so, Patrick, when we, you know, you, you mentioned the, uh, that estimation, um, how many cars you might be responsible for, for putting out. Mm. I mean, you're going back on your your career in car design and mm. and looking at the models. You know, not just the production models that you're responsible for um, for their design, but the concepts as well. Mm. Um, it seems to me like you were such a prolific designer. You were you you and your team were pumping out new concepts and new cars um, very consistently at, at a rapid rate. Um, and and there's there's lots that we could talk about, uh, but I, I think you know we've only got a certain amount of time. Um, no problem, don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. Um, so I mean, so, some of the concepts and and uh, um, that that Patrick was responsible for, particularly a Renault, we could go into. Uh, the Laguna Roadster, for example, the, the first concept, um, the Scenic, the Argos, um, the Initial Paris, um, the Val Satis. Uh, you know, the list just goes on and on and on in terms of concepts. Um, and and it's the same with the production cars. There's so many there. Um, perhaps I know it's probably quite a tough question, Patrick, but perhaps I could just ask you to... Um, pick out some of the highlights from your career. Okay. Well, when I um, graduated, I graduated in, uh, in uh, Birmingham. Um, and clearly, I wanted to, I really, as I often said, you know, I wanted to shape the change rather than change the shape. That was my approach as a designer and um, when I got into companies where I could actually take a design direction I was very much involved in the development of new concepts I've been always fascinated by by concepts by new ideas by uh, b basically answering the questions which customers don't actually ask themselves you know I'm always uh, fascinated by uh, you know the famous um, uh, phrase of, of of you know Henry Ford and who said that if I had asked my uh, my customer what they wanted they would have asked for a faster horse and uh, I always felt from my side that um, uh, you shouldn't just listen to you know to the to the customer uh, because that's not where you're really going to learn much you really have to watch the, the the customer to really understand uh, understand him and understand what he might like. So all that to say as an introduction that I've always been fascinated by the search of new concepts. I define design as being 90% analysis and 10% of magic. And in all those years, um, I've I've had, you know, I've been blessed because I I spent 17 years, I, I worked 17 years for Ford, and I had the opportunity of working on some fascinating uh, cars. Uh, some were, you know, great classics, uh, like the, uh, you know, the Cortino Mark, uh, whatever it is, for, I'm not sure, uh, who were very successful, very, um, I would say, uh, classic uh, type of cars. But of course, I was involved, you know, in, in, in the Sierra, uh, which was uh, a, a tremendous experience, uh, be it from a creative standpoint, from working closely with um, uh, some brilliant uh, designers, and also I had the, the enormous uh, chance of um, of working at the time for uh, a great design leader called uh, Uwe Bansen, who um, who who is probably the most influential design leader I, I worked with. Um, and then later on, I, I, I spent a couple of years in Volkswagen, but that was really not uh, uh, an important time in so far that originally I was hired uh, to become the very first head of uh, 
uh, design within the group, uh, namely to take over the three brands at the time, which were Volkswagen, Audi, and Seat. But I, I elected to go to, to Renault, and I went to Renault because I was given um, 100% uh, carte blanche, you know, open uh, to, I, I was given 100% freedom by the, um, the head of, of the, the president of, of, of that company. I joined a company which was uh, in, in, very bad, in very bad shape and um, uh, given the opportunity of redesigning the styling department for it to become a design department. And then I had, uh, as a result, um, I worked on many, many uh, projects. The, the Probably the most memorable first project I worked upon was the, was the Renault Twingo, which was a uh, tremendous, tremendous battle that took place. And the car was really saved by the, the, the president because there was an awful lot of opposition from the marketing uh, and also some product planners. And there was, uh, I, I recall uh, this, this, this session that took place uh, where the uh, uh, presentation was made of the uh, uh, clinic test result on the Twingo where 25% people just loved the car. 25% uh, said, uh, yes, but I wouldn't want to be the first person in the street and then 50% that hated the car. Now, the marketing people concentrated on the 50% and say, we've never had such bad numbers. And I said, but we've never had 25% of people so excited that they would be prepared to wait, whatever the case, for, for that model. And uh, so there was an enormous amount of pressure that was put on me to change the car, to just wipe off the smile on its face. Uh, and um, I went for a weekend in my south of France, you know, where, 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 where I was born. And uh, it was before the times of uh, uh, emails, but I wrote a little handwritten mail to the president of the company. And I said, uh, the biggest um, risk in our company is not to take any risk. I ask you to choose instinctive design rather than extinctive marketing. And he sent me back the note saying, absolutely, um, tout à fait d'accord, absolutely okay with you, my dear director, let's go ahead. And that was it. Uh, and so this was the beginning of, of a new, uh, new era for, for all of us where, uh, uh, we we really searched to establish new new concepts. Um, probably the most successful of the of all the concept that we were involved was um, uh, which was presented first as a concept car, which was the 1991 Scenic, um, and uh, it we made it into a production car which didn't look anything like the uh, concept car. It was a a decision. I'm not, you know, particularly proud of the looks of that car, but the, the 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 idea that we had perhaps not to take any risk with we had already a risky concept. Nothing like that had been offered in Europe, and so we went for a more conservative car, which fitted into a range of the Megane. You know, and it, at the time it was called the Megane Scenic. The thing is that car was just so extraordinarily uh, successful and um, it was uh, in fact uh, uh, manufactured at uh, i think something like 1900 per day you know and it it actually saved the company you know it saved the company they made an awful lot of money and louis schweitzer my later uh, boss um, said in a in a speech that um, it was a scenic that allowed Renault to actually um, uh, buy the uh, controlling interest in Nissan. So yes, this is where you know design can uh, can have a, a, a huge influence. But then later on I you know we worked on many many concepts. Argos was one of my favorites. Uh, it was uh, we we called it uh, the you know the, the new beginning basically the, the new spirit. 
Uh, for, unfortunately, it didn't go into production, but something very close to it, uh, the Audi TT, of course, uh, was uh, highly uh, influenced. And that was what, in fact, the, the, the guy who did the, the, the design, uh, an American called Freeman Thomas, uh, wrote one you know, later when he moved out of Audi. Um, but there are so many, you know, um, you've mentioned those. Uh, uh, I'm very proud of the uh, uh, of the Initial uh, Paris. In fact, I have a one-fifth scale model in my living room. Um, it's also a, an enormous regret because that was the car we were hoping that the company would manufacture. And instead, um, uh, well, I, I, I really lost uh, that one. Um, and, and um, unfortunately, we the product planning pushed very hard for a totally different package to the one that we had developed. And that turned out to be the production uh, Velsatis. But I could, you know, I can, I can talk about this for two hours and I'm not sure whether you have that much time in front of you. So I will hand it over to ask me a question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is, there is so much to go through. Um, I guess if we go more broad, Patrick, uh, you know, mentioned some of the models, uh, and and you know, you mentioned your time at Ford as well. Do you, do you think that you had perhaps any um, sort of design principles or you know a specific language in mind when you were developing each car and each concept, or were you? really sort of open book, um, looking at all different types of things? Well, I think you can be um, ahead of times in terms of concept, but you cannot be ahead of time in terms of styling. Styling is presenteeism, it's today. And, and the, the best example of that is if you, if you look at the work of the greatest designer ever, Leonardo da Vinci, he invented everything submarines, helicopters, tanks, and so on and so forth. But if you look at the design language, you're straight into the 15th and 16th century. So I, I would say that we tried as designers to be as far ahead or try to rewrite a new page each time we, we developed a, a, a concept with the hope that we would be able to apply that onto our range. But in terms of design language, we, we flew, you know, we, we flowed from, from the era that we lived in. And not that we were following as such, but we continued. At one stage, you know, we felt um, that we should change totally our vocabulary. And that was the time of the Argos. Um, and, and, you know, we, we moved, and we all know that in the automobile uh, business, more so earlier than now, but there used to be these trendsetters, namely the Italian uh, carrozzeria, uh, you know, be it the, the, the Bettone and the Pininfarina and, 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 and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, uh, Giorgetto Giugiaro. Um, and, and there, uh, you know, people looked upon what the Italian carrozzeria was doing and then establishing their new design within the broad context or, or, or the uh, formula uh, um, treatment of, of the day. And then of course, and, and by the way, I remember very well that uh, when uh, at Ford uh, developing the, 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 the Sierra, uh, we, we felt a bit anxious clearly because you know, we were developing a design language which was not ruling in those days. And we had already uh, engaged in uh, developing the tooling for that. Uh, when there was the Turin Motor Show and there was the reveal of Giugiaro's Medusa. And when, you know, the curtain was taken off and there was this rather flowing, uh, beautiful car, we all went, oof, because in fact, we, you know, we were going in the right direction with regards to design language. Now today, we do have these developments within companies companies who are doing extremely, um, almost close to bio design, but very soft designs. And then others who are mature, which have a rather crisp, um, crisp type of handling. But 
um, there is not one direction. And I think the companies are, are far more uh, tracing their own approach than actually following a worldwide trend. That, I believe, does not exist anymore. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess when we're talking about trends as well, Patrick, you know, we, we can talk about um, mobility in general and, and there seems to be, you know, a lot of work at the moment going into this, this, this idea of cross mobility where, you know, cars are becoming perhaps in a, in a, in a post COVID um, pandemic world, cars cars are becoming more shared um, and uh, maybe smaller or, or taking different shapes at least. Um, you know, they're, they're being more influenced by hmm. um, things like trains and that, I guess, um, passes on to your, your work in Naval. Um, you know, you, I, I wonder how your your work in car design, your your extensive background, has really been brought forward into your into your work with boats. And um, could you perhaps talk about any particular boats that you've worked on that have that automotive influence? Well, I've worked on 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 many boats. Uh, um, I've calculated that in the last ten years, I've worked on close to 80 uh, projects. Um, the day before yesterday, there was a launch of my, uh, uh, I think it's my 26th boat, um, which was a, a 55 foot catamaran. Right now I'm, I'm working on a 110 foot, on an 80 foot and a 72 uh, feet boat. Um, all through, these boats right from the beginning. Um, one of the things which I really wanted to get back to was was drawing because I think that uh, drawing is so important um, to you know to 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 be able to uh, to to let your brain uh, through your hand express itself and communicate and so on and so forth. And it's a tremendous uh, tool. And I found that um, in in the uh, naval business uh, people didn't um, didn't draw a lot you know uh, most most of the people were in fact either architects with and brilliant architects for that matter and then um, there are also uh, an awful lot of designers who studied transportation design but couldn't get into the automobile industry because of uh, the economics because of or perhaps they just didn't have the, the actual talent to, to get into the uh, auto business. What I did find is that all that I learned in the automobile uh, design uh, experience was totally usable within the naval boats. Because basically, you're always facing the same uh, questions, uh, namely things like, uh, you know, I'm designing a boat, so who am I uh, designing it for? Um, I have a, a, a way of working, which is when I work with a new company, I say to the people, can we get some of us together and, and discuss, first of all, what are, the, what are the company's values? Can we you know, list what are the company values? And then when we've established that, we, uh, we then establish what are the key words. Now, why I'm talking about that is because this is exactly what I put into practice whilst working in, in the automobile industry. And then we establish what the keywords are, not, you know, 20 or 30, just limited to three or four, to really concentrate. This I learned from reading a very interesting book by a, a Japanese uh, uh, linguist called Takao Suzuki. He, he uh, wrote this book called um, uh, Words in Complexity. And he, uh, I'm sorry, words in context, words in context. And what he said is that uh, he working on languages, uh, saying that to define a word, you have to say what it is, but you also have to say what, you, what it is not. So when I work with people in a design project, I try to establish what it is and what it is not. And for example, when I work with a company, I say, what would be the worst headlines that you would like to read about your new boat 
And that helps people, you know, to actually concentrate on on what they want and what they would like to express. And to me, that's extremely important because that frees me up as a designer to really uh, explore uh, the, the territory. And um, all the boats that I have uh, designed over these years, these 10 years, uh, they all either or they use uh, automotive uh, design uh, languages, you know, I mean, uh, in terms of this, uh, this uh, need to, first of all, tackle the proportions, you know, it's, it's so important to get the proportions uh, uh, right, you know, Le Corbusier, the architect said um, that um, um, good proportions is what makes an object smile. And I think there's an awful lot of truth to that. So working on proportions, working on language for example right now and and since the beginning i work with a fellow who used to be designing bugatti Cheyron, or rather doing the uh, development of the bugatti Cheyron, uh, a guy called fred gasson and he's just absolute genius in terms of formal development and we use his tremendous uh, um, uh, what you, what you might say, the, this, the, 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 the tremendous talent that he has, which is learned in the automobile business, and we apply that to, to our boats. Now, some of our boats are more architectural, probably the ones which are the most, um, the most automotive in feel is either the Excess, there's a, a brand called Excess, and there's also another brand which I've worked for called Gunboat, which uh, you originally was a, a, an American company and now is part of a, of a French group. And I worked with um, uh, with a partner this time, which is quite you know. Sometimes I work with other people on this, but I worked with a um, with a, a, a fellow called Chris, uh, Christophe Chaudal Anglais, and we designed the um, Gumbo 68, which I think is very automotive. And when you you look at the shape. You know, you you can feel the automotive uh, background. You can feel the compound shapes, the taut uh, sh the taut lines, the the research for the most uh, propulsive kind of look, the the proportions, the the right relationship between the upper and the lower. All these things, the picking up the lights. Uh, you know, so it's very much all, all that I have learned over these whatever number of years, forty two years in the in the business, I now apply to uh, designing boats. And uh, I have never been as busy as now, you know. Uh, I mean, I have, I don't know, five, six, seven boats going on right now at this very, uh, at this very moment. So it really is, um, it's really quite, um, you know, uh, quite amazing. I never, never got into this business to make money. I got into the business just, not to be um, bored and wanting to have a challenge, but as you know, as it says, it says that don't change, don't chase the money. Let the money chase you. And it's it's been a very good business, uh, even though that was certainly not my intent. What I wanted to do was something interesting with my life, and the same thing that I wanted to do interesting things with my students to transmit all that passion that I've. Uh, have in in myself for the design minutes for creativity for creating things for trying to make the world a better place i guess hey patrick it's always good to have a challenge and uh it's always good to be busy so uh yeah great stuff um unfortunately we're running out of time uh but before we finish um, I just want to point out one thing. Uh, I introduced you, Patrick, as uh, author as well as naval designer and um, former design car design extraordinaire. Uh, so, you know, perhaps you could just give a little brief outline um, to your book, uh, Design Between the Line. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, it's it's a book which I have not written as a, a, an autobiography. I was very uh, fortunate in my own, uh, my, from, from my side of having already two biographies which have been published. Um, and uh, let me see, there's one, which is a very nice, a nice book. 
Uh, but basically, biographies, they follow a pattern and you have to fit in all the parts, you know, and fill in all the parts. And this is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to write a book, which clearly it was my personal input. Yes, there is a, a, um, a sequence of events, uh, be it from the first years that I spent in Great Britain and all the way through. But I wanted to, not to tell about my life, but I wanted to express myself in, in terms of some of the experience I've, I've had. I've, I talk about people, I talk about history, I talk experiences that I've had with various uh, uh, leaders, uh, some of the great people that I've, I've uh, met, uh, you know, be it people like Bob Lutz or Steve Jobs or people like that, and, uh, and talk about ideas and talk, and talk about um, philosophy, about approach to life, uh, talk about how best to, what, what are the criteria to hire a designer? I've, you know, hired hundreds of designers, you know, and I, I've, so I've tried to put this uh, into a, a book. And I had a, um, a, a comment made by a, a good, a dear friend of mine called uh, Andy Jacobson, with whom I worked at Ford. He's just reading it right now. And he said, well, I didn't expect from you to it to be just a biography. But he said, I, 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 he said, this is a book which you should make sure it gets into the hands of people who are studying design, be it industrial design or automobile design. So that was a, a fantastic uh, compliment from Andy. And yes, it's, I think it's a, I've had wonderful uh, uh, comments from various people. And um, I was terribly, terribly uh, lucky to have had the very first comments that was, in fact, a review in um, Car Design News <laughs> so, some time back. So here it is. There's my book. <laughs> and it's interesting. Look, look at this. If you look at the illustration, you've got the car going in one direction. All designers tend to des design car that way. If you're in the boat business, they'd always draw it the other way around. So I have a, a Bugatti down there, and I have one of the boats I designed. And one is going left to right, and the other one is going right to left. That's different cultures. It's, yeah, it's beautiful in this illustration as well. Um, thank you, Patrick, so much for joining us at Car Design Dialogues. It's been an absolute pleasure for me to speak to you. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs>